Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Disco Elysium with me, Bring It On. I do want to talk to Kuna about the armor. I doubt he's going to say anything until we appease him. Have you come to make your offering to Kuno? Yeah, whatever then. I'm not going to. I know that I need to get him cigarettes or a book. Uh, let's inspect this instant photo of tattoos. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso of the hanged man, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time the lines intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. It still kind of looks like a map of the stars in the night sky, but something's not right. Who are you? Gone. What's the meaning of this tattoo? For you to discover. You've gotten as far as you will without assistance. Someone who knows about history could tell you. Alright, put the photo away. Guillaume Lemillion. Bad news. Guillaume Lemillion did not become a cop. In 38, he went on a tour to the Xinyao province in Safre, where he died of autoerotic asphyxiation. His body was found hanging from a decorative dragon tree in his junior suite amid drug paraphernalia, unwholesome objects, and the Sylvia Trainer single Wonderland skipping in the background. And yes, you can take this as a metaphor for Revachol in the 30s, and also as a warning. So plus one pain threshold and all psyche learning caps raised by a one. Okay. Let's look at this ledger that we found. Or, I guess, our ledger. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Anything else? There's a piece of toilet paper, or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper, desperately sticking to the back of the blue plastic clipboard. It's a metaphor for you. <laughs> Below the pathetics, terror. Do not look into its blue heart. Inspect the toilet paper. It's just toilet paper. Stick into the back of the plastic clipboard. You can take it off if you want. Maybe it's kitchen tissue. They look exactly the same. If you want it to be kitchen tissue, it can be kitchen tissue. <laughs> it's not, though. It's toilet paper. All right, take it off. Still wet, the toilet paper, I mean, kitchen tissue, sorry, peels off the plastic easily. All you have to do is shake it off your finger and voila, the ledger now looks marginally better. Right, let's put that away. And we have a new skill point that I need to put into... I think it's Inland Empire. Let me do double check that. Pretty sure it's Inland Empire. The man before you is not. Yeah. Oops. Wrong key. Plus, I think between Encyclopedia and Inland Empire, it's our two most used checks. There's a lot of dialogue associated with these two. Haven't seen nearly as much for the rest of these. So I think it's a good investment regardless. The man before you is naked but for a pair of underpants and white boots. His skin is marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity. On his chest, a fading web of tattoos. The cargo belt used to hang him from the tree looks reinforced. All right, uh, tell me, who are you, dead man? I'm gone. Where have you gone? Into the wow pile yonder. And where is that? In the past. Way out west. I can see you're gone, but who are you? I'm a joke. Look at me. There's nothing funny about you. 
There is nothing funny about jokes either. Who were you when you were alive? A killer. A motherfucker. And a killer. I have another question for you. Go ahead, Kobo. Uh, what is happening? What do you mean? I'm talking to you. It's the power of your... Black frothy liquid starts bubbling on his lips. Imagination. Go ahead. Ask me more questions. You fucking love questions. Why do I love questions so much? Because you're a copper rooney. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Yeah, give me questions. Here you go, Looney. Is my name Rooney? Fuck no. You're no Rooney. Yeah, Rooney's obviously not who I am. Between you and me, your name is probably Harry. Could it really be Harry? You can be anything you want to be, brother Copo. Why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible? Because you have. I do kind of hate him. I wasted a skill point on this. I feel like I'm not getting a lot out of it. So I hate you. You stink and you're boring. Do I remind you of someone? Oh. A child born with Muller's disease, Harlequinism, grown up miraculously. A baby affected with Harlequinism. You sure wrinkled out of that one, Coppolini. All right, enough. Come back later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dreams. That's not what this dialogue says. You can come back and look into this face anytime you want. Humor yourself with my Harlequin features. Ask me your little questions. Freshen your memory. Create associations. Remind yourself of your mortality. Copa Lopo. Have something I need to know, corpse man. Of course. No. Come back. Alright, let's continue looking at our ledger then. We did not get anything out of that. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hanging from the board. With the permeables drawer inside. It's barely held together by a clip then made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Inspect the clip. An aluminium block runs the width of the board, biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. Run your finger across the aluminum. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. It is similar to the RCM watermark on your blazer the lieutenant mentioned. Didn't he say something about the headlights of his motor carriage? That you can read these there? A lieutenant, is this one of the, the hologram watermarks you mentioned? Uh, point to the sticker. What? Yes, uh, allogen watermark used for adding information to RCM property. Uh, he's lost in his own notes. It takes a moment for him to see it. Uh, interesting. What kind of information? It depends. Aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp, mine has my station number and address. The information varies by date of issue. Maybe yours will have how many cases you've solved. How many years you've been on the force, he's thinking. It'll have that. How can I read it? Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. Uh, before, you mentioned the headlights of your vehicle. Yes, RCM vehicles have headlights tuned especially to reveal halogen watermarks. This means you can read the watermarks if you just turn the lights on. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Okay. He returns to his neatly kept notes. While a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard in your hand, it's a sorry sight. Let's, uh, yeah, browse the white papers. We'll just do it in order. They're not exactly white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. 
Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines, forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. Uh, what is in there? What are they about? Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51, this year. The exact number is hard to estimate, due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases, undertaken, not completed, mind you. It's the middle of March. You have attempted two cases a week on average. Is two cases a week a good, uh, good caseload, Lieutenant? Huh? Two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it, lest you start making mistakes. He raises his nose from his notes. Uh, two cases a week appears to have been my load, Lieutenant. I'm not sure I completed them, though. Two? That's a lot. I didn't mean to say you are making mistakes, by the way. That was presumptuous of me. He raises both eyebrows. I'm sure I made plenty of mistakes. It's okay. We all make mistakes. He nods and turns back to his own case files. Like a fan of girls, the checkered papers dry in your hand. The handwriting is extremely dense, if mostly illegible. There is mention of a naming convention here. Yes, it appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins. Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. A title, one might say even. One that draws inspiration from snoop fiction and vespertine cop show staples. Oh my, and they're written in capital letters too. Yes, all caps. One is called the Next World Mural. Another, the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Another yet, the Unsolvable Case. More? Others appear more lighthearted. The guys on a couch in an unexpected location and the murder at the hookah parlor. Even the rare Article 3 collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done. Once you're done inspecting them up close. Uh, Kim, my cases appear to employ some kind of naming convention. You mean the alphanumeric? Officer, precinct, time of arrival at the scene? No, I mean a non-numeric one, with titles. Oh, you mean the titular? Yes, well, so do I. In our defense, almost everyone in the RCM does. Uh, why is that? It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. I seem to have named a case the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one the man with the hole in his head. That was a real person. His death was real. Still, I named it that, to amuse myself. He peeks into his notes. I pray his loved ones never find out. He smiles. Uh, what happened to him? Rail spiked through the head. He died. It was a workplace accident. I count the pages. I have to open an official case. Is there room? There is, for precisely one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. Once all the tasks are accomplished, the case is complete. Commit to paper using the pen Lena gave you. That's interesting. I didn't think that these items... Oh, where are they at? I can't open it up here. Because that's not a key item. It's not under the uh, inspection side. The uh, inspection tab or whatever it is. So I should probably hold on to all the items that I find and not try to sell them like I was thinking about doing. The tasks you've completed flow out of the kind green ape pen in a brash freehand similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple. 
a language developed for mental rigor and simplicity. Inspect the victim's body. Get the body down. Interview the cafeteria manager. It's not exactly poetry, but poetry would be out of place. I right, cross out the ones you've already finished. A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it seems to say. And you, and you. Things to be done, and things already done. The composition of reality. This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizen's militia. Now all that remains is to name the case. Lieutenant, have you by any chance, chance named our case? No, actually. Any ideas? The Hanged Man. Great. That's great. That's actually what I was thinking too. The Hanged Man. Good, strong name. We have a very good name for the case now. I'm going to start calling it The Hanged Man. It's good to be sorted this out. He flips the pages of his notebook. I'm not inspecting these. Close the case files. You don't exactly close them. So much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. Arson. Petty th you don't exactly oh, that's close new. them. Arson. Petty theft. Spousal abuse. Handwritten logs on dozens of investigations date back to January 51. Stamped case files. Commit to paper. These are your last couple of months in Revachon. Precinct 41. Jamrock Quarter. Yeah, so I browse the case files again. It's just giving me a summary of those. You don't exactly close them. So much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. Alright, can I read the case files now? Yes, you can piece them together using the alphanumeric code on the margin. It always begins with HDB41. Then, date of initialization and time of arrival on the scene. Followed by the title. For example... HDB 411201170. The Next World Mural. How long does it take to read a case? It takes about half an hour to piece one together using the system you've devised. Where do you want to start? All right, let's revisit this. Not much has changed in the meanwhile. A bunch of sodden papers still sags from the clipboard. Now let's browse the yellow papers. In the back, you see thin, translucent copy of paper. Some neon yellow, some bright red. All covered in boxes, like marching armies. These look like official forms, waiting to be filled out. Then rip them from the binder and hand them out, according to type of form. And what types of forms are there? Three. The topmost are misconduct fines, the middle ones are station calls, and the bottommost are field autopsy forms. Each is easy enough to make sense of. You don't have to be an intellectual giant to do police work. All right, a misconduct fine. A monetary penalization ranging from 20 to 250 real. Severe cases allow for 1,000 real, but that requires special paperwork. The details of issuing these fines are spread out over the rest of the fields. But they appear pleasantly vague. A uh, station call. These are quite sinister in turn. They give a date and time for the person to appear at the specified precinct police station. Below the call are the criminal charges you risk by not appearing. And field autopsy. A dozen pages of thin copy paper, bright red in color. You see the parameters of a deceased human form waiting to be filled in. Age, sex, condition of internal organs. All right, enough of these. Close forms. Yes, all that remains now is to fill those forms and hand them to people. Fines for wrongdoers, interview requests for bad guys, and field autopsies to dead guys. The rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for wear. Being sandwiched between the board and the rest of the paperwork must have spared the fragile copy of paper. Right, let's actually smell the ledger next. 
I feel like that shouldn't take very long. The acidic stench of rotting food is rubbed off on the cellulose. It now forms the base of the experience. This base surrounded by a faint air of spoiled meat, the stuff of death itself, and then sprinkled liberally with the citrus zest of toilet cleaner. All right, let's look at the clipboard. It's made of dark blue plastic, hard enough to beat someone to submission with. The edges are rounded, however. The U4 size board feels thick and heavy in your hand. Light shimmers on its wet surface. On the back, you see the embossed letters RCM. Uh, what did you say the color was? Blue. The blue heart. Don't look into it. Shake the ledger. Something rattles inside, ever so lightly. Is there a hidden compartment? Permeables. It's not hidden per se. The compartment is made for permeable materials that would get damaged if something happened to it. The plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli, but it is not see-through. You cannot see to its center. I feel like I may have missed a perception check here. Uh, how would I open it? With your hands, you four-sized pages hang from the clip screwed to the top of the board. Okay, let's take that off, the Lonesome Long Way Home. That should put us over 50% for the check. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hat. Wait, did I not take it off? The board with the permeables drawer inside. It's barely held together by a clip, then made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. So I don't think this updated appropriately. Because I no longer have that thought equipped. So I shouldn't still have that minus one, right? Or maybe I have to progress time by like a minute or something for that to change. So let me try progressing time and see if that fixes the display. So I'm going to go back to the cafeteria real fast because we should have access to the kitchen. It's past one o'clock. If I can get a higher percentage check on that, higher percentage for that check, I would definitely prefer to do that. So that way I don't have to try and put a point into it later to retry the check. So let's try it now. Wait, did time go by? I don't think it did. All right, the dishes are drying. They smell of chemicals and pine trees. Oh, what is this? Some money. I had a thought. What happened to it? Oh, the room of spices and something. I missed that. You see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. You immediately feel drawn to the color. Blue is for mystery. Uh, touch the door. The cobalt blue surface feels rough to touch. The stainless steel door is flush with its frame on every side. It leads to a side building adjacent to this one. The old building next to this, half ruined. Whatever is behind it must be older. Try to push on the door. The door does not budge. I wonder where this door leads. You do? It's a door in the back of the kitchen. Why do you care where it leads? The lieutenant regards you with patient skepticism. Out of duty. We may find something pertinent to the investigation. Hmm. Yes. I suppose it's worth seeing if we can get in. Just to be thorough. As a side investigation. Uh, yes. A mini side investigation. Gart is the person to ask about this. The cafeteria manager. He looks at you, and at the door. Alright, let's leave. And let's check this again. It's the ledger you found in the trash. It's just a cabbage updated. of papers hanging from the board, with the permeables drawer inside. It's barely held together by a clip, then made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Alright, so <clears throat> I'm going to operate on the assumption that this just is a display error, but that I actually have like a 50... 3% chance or whatever it is to succeed. Is not what you end up doing. You squeeze the plastic to slide it open, but nothing happens. Then you bend it some. 
then crack it. The goddamn thing is stuck. The ledger quivers in your hand. As it shakes, the pages rustle. This pathetic mess suddenly afraid of you for some reason. Alright, so I am going to reload this, only because I feel like I'm getting cheated on that check. Also, I missed that one uh, thought when I went into the kitchen. I want to try that again as well. Yeah, I don't really want to reload, but I don't like how I didn't change my display. I want to see if it changes it now that I reloaded. It's the ledger you found. Still in didn't the change it. Okay. Well, maybe I'm misunderstanding something. The room of spices, alcohol, and tomato hangs in the air. All right, so that's what I missed. You see, you need to the cobalt. It leads to the door. Does. You do? Hmm. Gart is the per- Alright, I'm gonna try it again. Uh, if I fail this time, it's whatever, it's the because I guess found in the trash. I'm misunderstanding something. Hanging from the board, with the permeables drawer inside. It's barely held together by a clip, then made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Alright, open the hidden compartment of the clipboard. Hmm. The two sides of the board appear slightly misaligned, like a drawer that's come off its slides. If you bend the plastic on your knee, slowly, the slides snap back into place. It should be possible to just, you know. All right, slide the drawer open. Without resistance or sound, the two panels move against each other. The compartment is now open. All right, what's inside? Two ticket stubs and a handmade postcard. I do want to make it clear that I don't intend to reload like that for checks, but I just feel like I want to see if maybe reloading would fix the display for the percentage because I removed that thought, which should have put my logic back up. See, I just re-equipped it. It, already, it doesn't say that I have minus one logic here. So I think it's just a display error with a thought. Uh, pick up the ticket stubs. Two octopuses are smiling reaching their tentacles toward each other in the colored pencil drawings. The tickets permit access to the zoo in Revachol East. The aquarium costs extra. These let you go there, too. That's a pretty big overreaction, I think. I'll pick up the card. Thin wax paper has been glued to a piece of cardboard. Sounds like leaves rustling when you pick it up. You see violet flowers, floral patterns, Patches of glue. Smell it first. It smells of chewing gum. Apricot flavored. A touch of cinnamon. The end of summer. You think the label says tutti frutti. Open it. Familiar handwriting lines the inside of the card. Looped, round letters in a woman's hand. A young woman in her twenties. There is care, effort, and a smile you think although that is not something you can read from someone's handwriting harry it begins you're already reading i wanted to write you a letter so you can read it when you wake up maybe it will make you happy keep reading your hand shakes holding the card every morning when i step out and you're asleep behind me it says i find a little piece of sadness in me I carry it in my chest, down Voyager Road. Every step I take, it grows. By the time I reach the fuel station, it has filled me entirely. I step onto the light rail and look back. Sparks fall from the bow collector. I know it will be like this until late afternoon, when I get off the 42 and walk back to you. Keep reading. You, you, every step I take will get lighter. It almost makes me run. Sometimes I do. I can't believe I met you. I can't believe the happiness I feel with you. You have a vast, vast soul. And I will always, always, always come back to it. Keep reading. Kisses, kisses, kisses. 
You feel the air sucked out of your lungs and the blood sucked out of your head. Everything around you gets dark. Small white dots appear. You feel the ledger slip from your hand. No, no, hold on. Hold on. To what? There's nothing. Detective, is everything all right? Fall sideways. Did I die? I think I just fa fainted, right? Oh. Did I die? There is nothing. Again. Nothing. Nothing, sad brother. No treachery. Just blackout. Just lie there. Passed out. Well, almost nothing. There is the ground below you. That's still there. And the small light that's on, fluttering somewhere in the basal ganglia. Who's that? That's me. Blue eyes. That's me. And who was that? Who was what? He speaks of the sickening longing, the unwell emotion. Even in the darkness, he's grasping for it. Still trying to hold on to the great sorrows slipping in the water. Slimy. No, I was cool. I'm cool. The cool when you're dead, brava. Here in the paleomammalian cortex, we call it the shadow. Because it's always there. Was that the X something? The bloated corpse of the past resurfacing. No, it was beautiful. Beautiful. Believe me, stupid ape. Its lack of beauty was not the problem. Where is Voyager Road? There is no Voyager Road. There are no roads, no houses, no lights in the windows. It's all on. Pause. Enough. Just lie there. Motionless. You think they would let you? Until you disintegrate into biomolecules? No. Someone is breathing on your face now, inspecting your pupils, stupid idiot. It's not coming back. Oh, but you are. They're pouring something on you. Something in you. It's... It's delicious. Glowing lights on a dashboard emerge out of nothingness. Where am I? The upholstered cabin of Lieutenant Kitsuragi's motor carriage, seated in the driver's basket. The air is thick with leatherworks and heavy fuel oil. Cold water runs down your chin. Drink. Water. Lieutenant is extending a small canister to your mouth. Drink. The water is cold, silvery. The stuff of life itself, as it pours down your parched throat. The pounding in your head recedes. The darkness parts. Drink. You haven't drunk water in two days. Did you know the human body is not made to survive on alcohol alone? You need a secondary form of hydration. He tilts the canister. Drink. With greedy gulps, you down half a liter of cold water. Some of it spills on the driver's seat. The lieutenant pays no heed to it. What happened? I came in contact with the burnout ruins of the past, Lieutenant. That does sometimes happen. He hands you the remains of your ledger. He replies with such understanding, it's as if the burnt out ruins of the past were an occupational hazard. Athlete's foot for cops. You dropped these. Are you okay to proceed? Yeah, let's solve this case. 
Good. Ledger of Failure and Hatred. Plus one Inland imp Empire, plus one Empathy, minus two Authority. This is the same ledger you found in the trash. Do I need to equip it? Oh, let's do that. I haven't used Authority yet. This is the same ledger you found in the trash, only worse somehow. It makes you think about the letter, about the woman's handwriting, about not wanting to get out of bed in the morning. Right, secret passages. We have a new thought. So my next level up, I'm going to unlock a new thought uh, cabinet slot. So white morning. Temporary research bonus minus one authority. So that's minus three authority total with the uh, clipboard equipped. Little guy gets further and further away. Research time five hours. You see yourself from above. You're passed out on the blue tiles of the hostel room floor. Even from this distance, you can see your eyelids flutter at the mention of what? A great white object. Letting out, to, letting out its sweet smell, like a lily of the valley. The little man's forgotten its name, but he still remembers the feeling. And look, he moves. The feeling animates him. He instinctively reaches out for the feeling's best friend, a bottle of Commodore Red. He puts on his disco clothes and gets smaller and smaller. Alright, I'm gonna go back in. We're gonna finish exploring the kitchen next time since we currently have access to it, and then we will... Well, I guess all we have to do is talk. We have to talk to the cafeteria manager about the dumpster and the secret passages. We also need to talk to the cook. So we'll deal with that in the next one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.